What's up guys, MC Personal Finance here, and welcome back to another video. In this video today, we're gonna to be talking about LEAPs, which are long-term equity anticipation securities, and why you should be using them. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, share this with your friends, so that they can also collect big 10 deeds as well. And this video is brought to you by Theta Gang. So long-term equity anticipation securities, what does this term really mean? It's really just an option contract that has one plus year to expiration. Now, some people can say leaps can be used as close to three months, six months, but just to be safe, I like to use one plus years because that way, when you sell your leaps or you roll it out and you get that capital gain, it'll be taxed as long-term capital gains and not short-term, which is a lot more advantageous. And since it is at least one year for my definition, it's a long-term position and you're usually bullish on this stock. Now you can do a leaps with a bearish position, but if you're gonna be bearish, I would think that you would just wanna short the stock. But there are situations where you could use a leaps as a bearish position. So why should you use leaps? Well, first of all, leaps are accessible to more people. So for this example, we're gonna look at the stock price of Disney. So right now the stock price of Disney is $177.11. And if you wanted to buy 100 shares, of that, you would need $17,711. Obviously, not many people just have $17,000 lying around. But if you're still long-term on Disney, like I would assume a lot of people are, if you wanted to buy an at-the-money leaps expiring January 20th, 2023, that would only cost you $2,495, which is significantly cheaper than the $17,000. And let's say you did have that $17,000, but you didn't want to buy 100 shares of Disney. Well, at that same price, you could buy seven calls at the 175 strike price at the January 20th, 2023. For even a lower price by a couple hundred dollars, you could get seven of those leaps. We're going to talk about later how much exposure you would have compared to owning 700 shares. So the second point, like I mentioned, it's a lower cost than just buying 100 shares outright. You get more exposure to the stock for the same amount of money, like I mentioned before, with the $17,000. And that goes in the Delta, and we'll talk about that later when I show you the example. You also have less theta decay compared to shorter term options. And we're going to talk about that in the next slide. And you can also use this as leverage to sell covered calls against your position. Mainly the big one would be the PMCC, or the poor man's covered calls. And I will be making a video on that. But like I mentioned, theta decay. So what is theta decay? Well, first, you've got to know what theta is. So theta is the amount of money you lose per day on a contract. So if you have a theta of negative 0.01, that means you're going to lose one cent per day on the contract value, which is equal to $1 because each contract represents 100 shares. And theta picks up exponentially as you get closer to expiration, especially around the 30-day expiration mark. As you can see on the graph, the theta decay picks up heavily as you get closer to expiration. And the closer to expiration, the higher theta decay. So vice versa, the longer time until expiration means you have lower theta decay, which means the contract value loses less money for a longer period of time. So when should you buy leaps? So the main time you should buy leaps is when there's low implied volatility. Now, like I've mentioned before in previous videos, you always want to be able to get in the market without trying to time the market. But there are times where, let's say right before earnings, if you buy a leaps at a very high premium and then you get IV crushed, which is implied volatility crushed, you're going to be worse off than if you just would have waited a week or two to buy the leaps later. But as you can see in this graph, there's a mean of implied volatility of a stock and the relative high and the relative lows. You want to be buying when the IV is around the relative lows or even at the mean, but you want to try to stay away from it if it's around the relative highs. And again, like I said, there may be some situations where you're bearish on a company and you want to buy leaps, but most of the time it's when you're bullish. So what should you look for when buying leaps? So you're going to want a delta of at least 0.7 or preferably 0.8. Delta is two things. First, delta is the amount of shares the contract represents. So as you can see with this delta, it's a 0.73. So when you buy this contract, you're basically owning 73 shares. You have exposure to 73 shares, which is why I mentioned before when talking about Disney, where if you bought seven of those contracts, you wouldn't necessarily have the same exposure as 700 shares. 
but for this same price of 100 shares, you would have a lot more exposure than 100 shares. And just for reference, the delta of those Disney calls was 0.58. So if you multiply 0.58 times 7, you basically have exposure to 406 shares for the same price as 100 shares. And like I mentioned before, you want to look for low IV. And if you're really convinced that the stock is going to rise heavily, then you can also kind of disregard the delta in terms of looking for a 0 0.7 point, preferably 0 0.8, and just go to where you think the stock is going to go. But you also have to keep in mind the break-even point of the stock. And also delta represents the probability of the contract expiring in the money. So this has a 73% chance of expiring in the money. So now we're going to go to an example of a leaps option that I currently own. So here we are in Robinhood. We have this Bank of America $37 call, which is currently worth $910, even though I've only bought it for $828. So the Greeks are that you saw on the slide are the same ones that I pulled. I that I have on this option. I just pulled it and put it on the slide. So you can see delta of a 0.73. If a theta of negative 0.0041. So that means every day my contract is only losing not even a cent of value per day. You can see implied volatility 26 points. And it was lower when I bought around. You want to look for implied volatility around, I would say, 20 to 30 percent, anywhere higher than that. Like you don't want to, I mean, you could if you're a Wall Street's bets legend. But I wouldn't buy leaps on meme stocks such as AMC, GameStop, BlackBerry. I That's just too risky for me. And yeah, you can also see two option order because I did add a PMCC, a poor man's covered call on top of this. But let's go to view all options. So here we are in view all options. Today is June 4th. So the lowest I personally would sell would be June 17th, 2022, but you can also do January 22nd, 2022. But for me, let's see, June 17th, 2022. Don't look at the $0 buying power. Again, this is like my options slash play cash account. So let's see, if we wanted to, we can try to find the good delta on the round point eight. So right here, $35 strike price. We have a 0.81 delta, so that's good. A low theta, which is good. Implied volatility, 27.9, which it's fine. We can see our break even is $44.68. As for Bank of America would have to be, so that way we could break even. It's around $1.50 above the current Bank of America price, but since we have close to a year, actually over a year until expiration, if we're bullish on this stock like I personally am, we are more than convinced that Bank of America will shoot through that. You can see right here, nine dollars and sixty-eight cents for the price, not nine seventy, because Robinhood always gets their cut. Also, Robinhood has added a profit and loss chart, and you can see Bank of America would have to be forty-four seventy because Robinhood again takes their cut for us to start making money. Our max loss is limited to the price that we paid for the contract, which would be uh, nine hundred and seventy dollars, but our max profit is theoretically unlimited. And if we wanted to buy 100 shares of Bank of America, it would cost us $4,300 approximately. But if we wanted to spend $4,000, we could buy four of these contracts and subsequently have exposure to 320 shares at the same price because just 0.81 multiplied by four. So really 324 shares of exposure for the same amount of price it would take to just to buy 100 shares. Now, one bad thing about Weeps is that if you're wrong, you could lose all your investment. You also don't get dividends. So if you're going to do this on a stock that gives out dividends, you will not be receiving the dividends because you technically don't own the stock. And it does eventually expire. So it's not unlimited time as if it was as if you were to buy the stock. But yeah, leaps are a great strategy for anyone who wants to be long term bullish, wants to get into options. But doesn't want to start off too risky or wants to be really bullish on a stock without having to fork up a ton of money. Yeah, so let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. I'll make sure to answer them. And again, make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends. Until next time, peace.